Hey guys, Jen from Vent Yoga here, and we've been going through the eight limb path. The eight limb path are the steps taken um, that guide you in towards this enlightenment or this non-reactivity, which is where we're working towards with the practice of yoga. So the very first step is called the yamas, and there's five of them. They're moral discipline. They're how we interact, They're almost like laws on how to interact with the world around you. So we've covered ahimsa, which is nonviolence, and we have covered satya, which is truthfulness. And so now we're on to asteya. Asteya is non-stealing. Just like the other ones, there's a very obvious definition and a not so obvious definition. So the very obvious is, of course, you don't go up and you steal something from somebody, right? But it goes deeper than that. This non-stealing has to come from somewhere. So we have to figure out within us why would we steal long before it gets to the point of us stealing something, right? It doesn't just happen by us going and stealing someone's wallet. What happens is that there's a seed that's planted that grows and grows and then becomes that action. So if we can stop it at the seed point, we stop the action. And that's how we move into that asteya, that non-stealing. So when you try to think about the why, then um, it becomes pretty obvious that if you steal, it normally means that you're lacking something. So if you want something or you're coveting something that someone else has, it means you don't have it already. So kind of the motivation for stealing is a void or lack. Something is lacking within you. If you're stealing someone's boyfriend, you're lacking your own relationships. If you're stealing bread, there's a good chance you're lacking in your own food. If you're stealing money, you're probably lacking in your own finances. So the first thing to do is to recognize that when you're coveting something from someone else, which is the first step before you actually steal it, you have to want it first, right? It usually comes from a place of lacking within us. The good news is this, maybe not in the bread example, depends how long it's been since you've eaten, but for the most part, this lacking, this void, it's not physical, it's here. If we're coveting something someone else has, it's because we feel like we don't have it. I'm not good enough, I'm not rich enough, I, whatever it is, we feel lacking here. We make the void ourselves in our head and once we have that void, we become motivated to fill it, that coveting step. And then once we become motivated to fill it, we might take actions to actually fulfill. So in order to stop the stealing, we have to stop telling ourselves we're lacking something. We have to stop that I'm not good enough, that I need more type of mentality because it's all mental. It's all mental. So when we look at some shiny new sports car somebody has, we have to start telling ourselves that we have enough, that our car is practical, that this is enough for me. And that's how we kind of cut it off at the knees before it even gets to the point of coveting or anything like that. We have to keep reminding ourselves that we have a lot, this abundance, this thoughts of abundance. And that's why a lot of times then, um, it's recommended that before you go to bed, you write down a, the two things you were grateful for in that day or something like that, because we need to keep reminding ourselves we have enough. So if we want to practice this non-stealing, this asteya, we have to stop thinking in terms of we're missing something, we're lacking something. Now, this non-stealing can also be defined in other ways. It's not necessarily a physical object. It could be stealing someone else's joy. Someone's really excited about something and they're so happy and they're telling your group of friends and you're just like, Pff. or you make a joke about it, or you put them down and you're taking away from them that joyous moment that they had. It could be when you're in the yoga studio. It could be everybody's in Shavasana. And then you get up and start rolling your mat and walk out the door. You just took away their Shavasana. You stole it away from them. I don't care how quiet you thought you were. 
Every person in that room knew that you were walking around. They couldn't be in their own shavasana. You stole that from them. And this isn't a lecture or anything like that, but, but we have to start thinking in terms of this non-stealing is consideration for others as well. What is their experience? Am I taking away from someone else's experience? Is a huge, huge way to practice this. Start thinking about what is it that I could do to give to people rather than to take from people. So in this asteya, to practice this moral discipline, you have to identify what's lacking, and then you have to work to fill that void mentally. Abundance, abundance, abundance. I'm fine, I've got enough, I am enough. And then you also have to consider other people. You don't want to steal their joy, you don't want to steal their experience. You don't want to steal their thoughts and pass them off as your own. There's so many ways that this shows up in our lives that we don't even think about. We think of non-stealing when we think of, you know, robbing somebody. It's not necessarily what it is. It's giving credit where credit is due when it comes to ideas and thoughts. It's understanding where it comes from. So next time you come to your mat, think about other people's experiences as well. Think of what can you do to not steal from that.